Yo! Ah! Here we are. Good to be back. Scott, it's a Scotch day. We're doing a... We're, by the way, this is a Nick Offerman Ooh. Lagavulin. A toast to Nick Offerman for winning the award. Golden Globe. Yeah. There you go. We got some golden drinks here. Ooh, that smells good. That is fucking... That is smoky. Mm-hmm. That is smokier than Sarah Huckabee Sanders' eye. Hey, hey. Ooh. Nice. Or uh, Snoop Dogg's ashtray. Mm. Ooh, that is good stuff. Where, well, uh, yeah, man. How you been? Good. Remember when he, qu- he said he quit smoking for about eight seconds? Who? And then it was all a s- Snoop Dogg. And it was all a ruse to sell his smokers or his barbecue bullshit. What do you mean? He's like, I quit smoking weed. And, like, you know, the, the fucking internet blew up. Oh, just to get up. attention. Yeah. And then he's like, just kidding, but buy my smoker, whatever. Smokeless grill. That was it. Smokeless grill. There you go. Oh, quit smoking. I got advertising. But got boy, it. did it work. And I'm sure he sold a. That's the new game now. It's just how the fuck do I make a splash? Because everything's all over the internet, you yeah. know? So how do I stand out for a I'm second? I'm gay. See me in uh, Denver this weekend. <laughs> there you go. That would yeah, work. That would work. I'm on the client list. <laughs> See me in Denver. <laughs> Aren't you glad you're not on that list? That's nice. I still. Wake up! Oh, we're like, too young to be on that list. If we were on that list, we would be on it for <laughs> the other reason. There. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Worst summer job I ever had. <laughs> you're just on. You're giving Stephen Hawking a massage, <laughs> not to turn him on, just to awaken some parts. Right, right. So what is up with that back. plane? So many people are on that fucking plane, mm-hmm. and I assume that not all of them are fucking miners. No. Well, you would have gone on that plane if he asked you. Yeah. It's That's a true. rich guy with a you jet. Would've, you would have fucked a miner if he asked you too. <laughs> <laughs> See my show in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, yeah. I think it's a it's a ride. I think sometimes, like, I think about being on the road. They're like, oh, my friend's got a. I knew I know a guy who's a billionaire. I just met him through. He's like, he liked my comedy, so we became like pals through that. And I remember one time I was on the runway in LAX. He's like, are you going to L? He texted me, are you going to LA today? I would have taken you on my jet. Oh, and I was like. I don't know. I, I don't think he's done anything bad. Sure. But I was like, shit, I would have I mean, I would have done it. Hell yeah. I'd do anything he asked me to do. I'd <laughs> suck his dick. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, how was the house? How was his how Awesome. Was his, great yeah. house. But Billions. I mean, like, you know, <laughs> of course it's a great house. That's true. It'd be great if you just lived in, like, a, a studio. <laughs> Not being specific, how did he make his fortune? I, I don't want to talk about it. It's too specific. Yeah. Okay. I think I, everything's tech now. I assume yeah, it's tech yeah, yeah. shit, yeah. but I don't know what, how that works yeah, anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. But Mark's met him. I did? Yeah, we went out with him Oh, night. yeah. Very unassuming. Yeah, You yeah. would never think. Yeah. He's like 11 years old, this guy. <laughs> you know? We had a fun night. That was a fun night. A rare night. night of Mark and Sam at a New York City nightclub. Nightclub. That, that, that ain't our scene. We, we didn't, you know, but. That's a different world. I remember you were single at the time, and we we saw this girl walk by. We were both like, "God damn!" And you went up and you went, "Hey!" And she went, <laughs> "You have to be more specific." <laughs> damn. Yeah. yeah, there were some hot chicks. I mean, the fucking Warriors were there. Draymond oh. Green and Clay Thompson walked in. Wow. I like, yeah, I was like, "All right." Yeah. This is the place to be, I guess. I know. Just you've probably walked by that door eight thousand times. It's like in the East Village. You go in, it's a fucking crazy. Yeah. Wild nightclub. This is good scotch. So good. Offerman does it again. So Could good. you get caught up in that lifestyle? Could like if you were like Could I? Yeah. No. No, no. It's no. just not us. It's fun it's to like intoxicating. It's too loud. Intoxicating? Yeah, it's for people with no personality. The yeah. music's so loud you can't have a conversation. It's for people on drugs. It is. You do drugs, you make eye contact, you make out. You got to like, get out of and here. And this is a no? These are all no's for you? Well, it's high Why school. Why does someone want to kiss him again? <laughs> <laughs> it's high school uh, like sequel it's just like who's hot who's right. not who's cool who's wearing what who's in the know who's in the mix it it sucks but mark and i also like i feel like we thrive based off our personalities and not based off how we look like yes. when i got laid it was like me it was me like making a woman laugh at a bar so it wasn't it wasn't me just like walking up to her like you yeah that's no. like that's some like emperor shit no no that's what you get at the courtroom him <laughs> you yeah 10 months later that's the man right yeah, there yeah so no that that is not my world and i it's cool to go see and like observe like a safari you know like look at her right. look at him there's that celebrity but i feel you feel i feel out of place the whole time yeah. i'm like i'm not cool enough i'm not hot enough i'm not tall enough i'm i'm too weird 
Yeah, the whole thing. I think off. you're very attractive. Hey, you do. If I was one of those models, I'd fucking I'd suck you off, dude. Well, when I was single, I would literally go up to girls at a bar and be like, ah, Conan. Because you know, <laughs> what, uh, what? Why else would she want to talk to me? Both of us, I think, both of us had a Conan uh, Tinder pick. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Good icebreaker. Yeah, what else am I doing? More matches. If a girl's going to be like, huh, look at these. <laughs> That's my tits. Yeah. You know, it's me and Fallon. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. I'm 5'10". I, you know, I didn't have any money. I, what, what else did I have to offer? A it's a cool, of it's it's, yeah. a, it, it's exciting. I think for a woman, it's like, you know, I'll try, I'll tr- I'll give it a try. Yeah. It's a different thing. Let's see if he's actually fun. Like, he's professionally funny. Let's see if we go out and he actually makes me laugh. Totally. But, uh. Did you guys ever... Oopsie. Did Yikes. you guys have her um, match with anyone sort of fancy on Raya? Yeah. I didn't do the Raya. Yeah, yeah, I got I got a few, but I but I'm not fucking saying. That's weird. Well just give me like a ballpark. Ballpark. Susan like, Boyle. A-list actress or she was in B movie, she had B cups. Um I all right, fine. I once fucked uh Kathy Bates. Dame Judy Dench. <laughs> all right, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll tell you off air. Okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. This is getting good. <laughs> Gypsy Rose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one who killed her mom. <laughs> and I, I never got caught neither. By the way, they show the mom's body dead. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fucking just the whole thing's horrific. Yeah. Everybody's ugly and trashy, and it's the kid, the boyfriend's like an autistic weirdo. Gypsy Rose before Gypsy Hoes, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Put that in the bank. Dude, uh, yeah, we we had we had. I mean, Mark and I would get fucking lit up. Yeah, I mean those cellar nights too. Those were the best. But you oh, can't keep yeah. up with comedy cellar servers. They they go hard. They go hard. But they go hard in the paint. I gotta say, not to be this guy, but I feel like that world, that lifestyle ended with us. I don't see young comics pounding the pavement, uh, drinking the night away, and then falling on the sidewalk. Well, like it's a we bad did. look, I think. I, yeah. think, I think, like, <laughs> we did it when there were less cameras around. True, true. I mean, because you now don't... Now comic's got a goddamn camera with them. I know. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I think so the, pr- the problem is, like, I, all, I did hear about a comic at a New York club who got, like, wasted and groped a bunch of other comics. Oh. And he's not getting spots anymore, obviously, because he can't fucking grab a <laughs> co-worker's tits. Yeah. Uh... I heard but, about that too, and that kid is lucky that he's not bigger. I know. I, ironically, if he was bigger, he'd be fucked. I know. But the fact that he's such a, he's not really established, it's saving his whole career. I know. Yeah, that was a, uh, you gotta, you gotta behave. You got, you gotta be like, Mark and I would like get shit faced, but we weren't like bad. We're good drunks. That's the thing. I mean, that's why you can still drink at our age because no one told us you got a problem and you gotta quit. Yeah, I mean, maybe a few girlfriends, but I don't listen to them. And uh, <laughs> no, but seriously, we don't. I don't think we have a like. It was ever like a problem. I think we're pretty like lovey drunks. Yeah, and I think we got that out in high school. Not the groping, but like I was like puking, <laughs> black. You know, you wake up on a sidewalk, you wake up on a couch, and you're like, "Where the fuck am I?" Then you have to walk home for two hours. That's a bad look when you're when you're getting older. Yeah, exactly. I did that shit when I was 16. I peed on a bunch of girls' couches because I would yeah. wet the bed. Like that, those were tough, yeah. tough mornings. I yeah. paid for a lot of dry cleaning yeah. in college because of the, <laughs> you know, the blood. But no, no. But yeah, just uh, a lot of like, sorry, I peed on your comforter. Here's you know, twenty eight dollars. You know, yeah, that'll cover it. <laughs> well, you know, it was the early two thousands. No inflation. Yeah, you know. Uh, those nights so they take a toll man oh they, yeah they take a toll on your body and, and at a certain point you're like fuck my life and the shame don't forget the shame the waking up like oh what did I do what did I, I was, say I was thinking about that actually because we talked about this last night Matt and I we were, we were just hanging out and we talked about you know when you're a guy like Chappelle and you have the money to get the IV every hangover, I know. you don't have to deal with the consequences that's a of great drinking point. right great so you point. kind of you you feel like shit for a minute, then you get the IV, and you're like, "Let's fucking go again." I'm back. I need a little shame to cut back on my drinking. It's not if I don't shame, the damage to your body stays the same. He's right. damaging his liver just as much as sure. you are. Sure, but he sure. doesn't feel it. Like, right. and it's not just Dave. It's like a lot of people. Anyway, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we should not focus on that. But. Yeah. Well, Bert too. I mean, Bert quit drinking. Basically, he'll have like a a beer here really? and there. Yeah. He looks. 
Amazing. That's why. He just cut down on the booze, and then we got drunk on the cruise. I think I talked about this, and he was like, this sucks. I'm hungover. I, I don't remember anything. Like, <laughs> this is a bummer. Like, how did I do that for the last that 20 is years? hilarious. That, yeah. That Bert drank so hard for the last 20 years, he forgot what not being <laughs> hungover was like. Pretty much. For two decades. And he pushed through for the cruise. Like, all right, I'll keep drinking for the cruise. But he was like, when I get off the cruise, I'm going back to no drinking. Well, I, I mean, I texted him the other day. I was like, dude, you look amazing. I mean, like, I saw the shirtless picture of him, and I was like, that yeah, you look like a different person. You he look shredded. healthier. And also, you don't, he's also like a strong guy and an oh, athlete. Yeah. You don't want to cut years off your life. You're a father and a husband. And I bet, like, <laughs> Leanne also is feeling his chest being like, could you stop drinking 47 beers a day? Sure. This feels awesome. You're ripped. Yeah. My parents came famously, they came to the show, and my dad was like, He's got a problem. <laughs> He's like, has it a button down tucked in with slacks on? He's like, this is insane because Bert Chug would chug like a 16 ouncer and then do the set and like throw it down. The crowd would go nuts. And my dad's like, that's insane. He's going to. And then we're drinking after. He's like, this is too much. And I'm like, He's the machine. Yeah, but when you're like an older person, it, it's yeah. more it, it, it's more clear to you. But I remember like being like in high school at dinner with my family and I like got a second beer. My grandfather was like, he had two beers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah, I get way more fucked up than this, Pops. I know, I'm taking it easy. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. like, you know, to them, they're like, what the hell are you doing? But also when you're young, you're like, I'm gonna bounce back. I'll be fine. You yeah. Know? That's when you hit your like mid to late 40s. That's when you gotta like be a little careful. I know, you know? I know. Did I ever tell you about the time I got, I blacked out in high school, my friends dropped me off at my house on the porch, then shot the the whole house up with paintballs. My dad comes out in a robe. He's like, God, ah, you fucking kids. And then he pulled me in and I was with my high school girlfriend at the time. He spanks me in the hallway and I start laughing. He's got me over his knee. He didn't know what to do because my dad's not really good with feelings and stuff. So he's like, God damn it, you're a drunk. And I was like, ah! And then, that then he starts eating your ass. <laughs> well, that pissed him off more. So he just throws me upstairs and he goes, you, stay down here. And he put my girlfriend in the living room and he interrogated her. He's like, what's his problem? Why is he drinking so much? And she was shit-faced, too. In a, porno, like, oh. in a porno, his dad would just start fucking his girlfriend. <laughs> dad, <laughs> stop! Very elaborate porno with the paintball and everything. <laughs> it's like Gran Torino. He just returns fire. Yeah. <laughs> Kills all your friends. He doesn't know they're paintballs. That's true. Yeah, my dad was in the military, too, so he's not fucking around. But uh, He's covered in purple paint. They're all in fucking red. <laughs> all dead. He just got... Do you see the bandana tie? You know, he goes, he's got got the artillery in a, in a <laughs> armoire and he's like chuck, chuck, i've been waiting for this and he goes out there you fucking kids so i had to clean the paintball shit the next day hung over but uh and he sent me to counseling what yeah so i had to go to counseling and i was in there and i remember being so mad at my dad because he spanked me and he yelled at me and all that and i'm in counseling and the lady's like so uh why do you why do you drink so much as you do you have, have you ever been beaten and i remember thinking Oh, well, I could fuck my dad. Right <laughs> but I didn't do it. I was like, no, no. I just said, I, I like drinking. It was fun. So yeah, I'd say we got it all out in high school. I, I had, uh, I remember my parents, we went to Miami one year for like, it was like, a, my dad would go there for work and he like turned into a family trip. And I went out at night and I got fucking wasted. And I somehow ended up with, uh, with the fireman's badge. I don't know how I had it. I just found it somewhere. So I was just like, I was just like using it. I was yeah. like, you know, as a kid, I was stupid. So I remember I smoked so much weed in high school. And this is when weed was like considered very bad. Yeah, yeah. And they found it. Ooh. <laughs> and they gave me, as I'm high, they gave me an intervention. What? And my mom, as the kicker, takes out the badge. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! And I was like, she's like, you, you're living a double life. And I'm like, no, I just got drunk and I took a bad. So I had to mail the badge back to the fireman. Oh. Like, you think I was like, well, what do you think I'm like rolling in? I'm like, this is under my jurisdiction yeah. now. Yeah. But they, my mom was so fucking mad at me. And <laughs> you show up to 9/11. I'm here, guys. <laughs> I got this. Yeah, it's not like a cop badge. It's not like a cool. I just show up to a fire. Right. Right. But uh, <laughs> I was just a dumb kid. Yes. But my same. mom was like, they were so mad. I, look, I was always high. I was just always. Oh, really? High. You were that kid. I was that kid. You're just like, uh, <laughs> yeah. Life. I know that kid. My I, my friend was like that. But those hijinks were wild. Looking back, because we're lucky we were alive. I mean, the drunk driving we did, and the the fist fighting, and all this shit. Like yeah. one time we were at a bar, we had no money. We're at this shitty dive bar in New Orleans. This guy pays for a high life. I remember with a fifty. 
and he like turns around for a second, and the bartender puts like forty seven dollars and fifty cents on the bar, and I just went. And I took it, and I go, let's get out of here. We got out of there, and we just fucking partied the night away. We bought, like, two handles of vodka. You know, we just went to town, went to fucking Burger King, and went into a parking lot. We're chugging shit. I mean, it was horrible. You're like, you're like John Cusack and Grifters. Yes, yes, exactly. One time that's going to go wrong, though, you know? Oh, oh yeah, it went, it went wrong a few times. We the handle chased. of vodka, like pop-off vodka, that was, like, the move. Mm -hmm. Or, like, uh, anything cheap that would get you fucked up. Because when you're a kid, that ha you're like... You can kind of hang, you can deal with a cheap alcohol hangover, but then you get older, you're like, I don't want to fucking feel. No. I don't want to feel a shitty, cheap booze hangover. But back then, it would, you'd even think of health. It was just like, no. how can we get the most fucked up for the cheapest? Smoking blunts on the, on the stoops and stuff. And yeah, and you're just like, I'm a fucking idiot. I'm like, yeah. But now it's like, it's so much better because as a kid, it's like peer pressure and you're like, oh, I just got to do this. But now I'm like, I enjoy it. You know, it's like yeah, same. This you just is want, nice. yeah. This is like great. This is like I feel loose and good, and uh, maybe our second one a day, so we're a That's little looser true. than normal. <laughs> but uh, but La last story. One time we got fucked up. We were doing the uh, the what are the aerosol in a grocery store, <laughs> and uh, my friend who is pretty smart. He's like now he lives in Seattle. He's doing. He's like a lawyer. He's married with yeah. kids. He goes, I got a crazy idea. We went out to the parking lot. There was a yappy dog in a car with the window cracked. And he goes, how about this? We'll go back in. We'll get high again. We'll steal a bunch of laxative and dog treats. We'll put the laxative in the dog treat. This kid was pretty creative. And he goes, we'll slip it through that crack in the window. When the guy comes back out, his dog will have shit all over the car. And I'm like, you're a fucking genius. So we, we, we got all the shit. We stole the whatever. And then we went outside and gave it to the dog. And the guy goes, hey, get the fuck away from my dog. So we had to run away. So we never got to enjoy the, the payoff. But <laughs> Your friends watch too many cartoons? <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. I mean, just to have the idea to do that. I mean, did he, maybe did he get that from like something about Mary or something? I don't know. I don't know that, where that's he got what, that. when they put the drugs in the food and they throw oh, it in. Oh, that's true. That's yeah. true. This was laxative, but yeah. Yeah, those were wild times. No phone, no camera. I mean, do you have like the meet in the park? We're all fighting, that old shit. Did you yeah. guys ever do that stuff? That was terrifying. Yeah. The, but yeah, I remember I had one friend who was like, the, he was like, the you ever have that one friend who's like untouchable? Yes. He's like the guy who's like fucking everyone's girlfriend. Mm -hmm. He's like the piece of shit. But you're like, yeah, hey, he's a survivor. You got to yeah. love him. Until <laughs> yeah. one day I remember a kid beat the shit out of him like bad and then he prepared to beat the shit out of him he brought a bottle of piss with him so after he beat the shit out of him he dumped the piss on whoa him. And I'm like, i mean that's kind of badass i guess but you could just piss on him yeah it might have like nerves uh, when that's there's nothing true. less cool he than shy. beating the shit of someone whipping yeah. down and be like ah fuck i can't i can't go <laughs> i had stage fright uh, i couldn't do it but so now your dick's just out but that kid it's funny how people grow up because that kid came to my show and uh Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and he was like kind of like the hot badass kid, and now he's like kind of like shy. And he's like, people grow up. I mean, everyone's like, you, you become a different. He's still a sweet kid, but like, and he was actually always nice to me. But he got, uh, <laughs> he got, he was like a cry for help kid. Mm. He got arrested in front of my home because, Whoa. Uh, yeah, <laughs> in Chelsea. No, no, this is Upper East Side. Oh, okay. So he he takes out a butterfly knife in a taxi cab and he starts carving swastikas into it. What Whoa. the fuck? Is he Jewish? Yeah. Oh. It was it was a cry for help. And, that was just what you carved then. And, and then was, my mom was, yeah, my mom bad. goes out and has to see him get pulled away by the cops. Oh no! Damn. And it's like it's a hard time convincing your mom that kid's gonna sleep over ever again. My mom's right. like, the one who did the swastikas, I'm like, he's a Jew. <laughs> it was a cry for help. He was a bad kid. It was a cry for help. But, uh, but <laughs> I saw him at a show, and he's like a shy, kind of like, you know, timid. It's like people, everyone's got their problems, and he had like a family that was fucked up. Everyone's got their shit, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. like bringing a bottle of piss to a fight and then losing. You got to <laughs> oh. walk home all bloody with a bottle of piss in oh, your hand. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's so brutal. You, you dump it on your own head. <laughs> yeah. I deserve this. And, and I fucking lost. It would have been the fight. You get kicked and it pops. You know that that's not good either. Yeah, yeah it's a tough one, right? You got to really the pee is it's so disrespectful. Like you think getting spit on is disrespectful. That's uh, I know. But kids fighting too. You're just like it's so stupid. Oh, dude, we had a guy in our school. He was like the bad kid. His, everybody knew his dad beat him. Like in gym class, we'd get shirts off, and he had just back. His back was just bruised and fucked up from who knows what, and. He stole my friend's ball, 
we were all playing basketball, and my friend, he's standing against a brick wall, and he goes, give my fucking ball back, and he took it, and you couldn't cross this kid. So he grabbed the ball from my friend again and threw it at my friend's face, hit the face, head hit the back of the wall, or back of the head hit the wall, Oof. passed out. And seeing that, you're just like, this is a... This is a tough school. That's like a badass bully, too. Yeah. Why did, bad people always have great aim. Hmm. Yes. Have you noticed that? Like yeah. the, That one kid would always like, this is the kid I'm talking about. I remember one time he just took a tennis ball and just gunned it at me and it hit me right in the face. I was like, <laughs> how the fuck? I know. What, are you going to the major leagues? That was incredible. I think I was have, angry, but I was also like, oh, my God. <laughs> they have no nerves, so they're not like, mm, they're never flinching. They're just right. like, I just live, baby. I don't think about shit. I got no anxiety. But this kid like wasn't an athlete. But he just had that gear to him. Well, I was like, that was fast. The way you like, you could gun it. He wasn't like, I don't think he played sports or anything. But like, wow. I think he was actually like, he might have played like hockey. But it was like he was the goon. Yeah, yeah. You gotta love that kid where you're like, he's got no athletic ability. But like, <laughs> he would just walk up to a kid and punch him in the face, and you're like, all right, penalty box. You served your purpose. You, right. You right. scared the other team. Uh, I love the idea of you bringing a kid over, and your mom's like, no. And you're like, he's a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of us. No, my I remember like uh <laughs> No, but you need that friend though. You like everyone has that friend who's like kind of the bad influence, but you see the good in him and, and like look, right. sometimes sometimes they push it too far, but sometimes you fucking you you know. Like there's something about them you yeah. admire where you're oh. like that kid pushes it to the limit, especially when you're a kid. And he would have your back in a second if something went down. Like they, they have nothing to lose, those kids. He did. I remember one time we were walking on the street and we were just like drinking forties on the street and this guy, like, kind of, this crazy guy popped shit, and we all fucking ran, and he stood tall and talked and talked shit to him, and the guy respected him. Wow. And we were like, wow, we're fucking pussy. We were, like, in seventh grade. Yeah. But, but he, the fact that he, like, and also it's like, what the hell are you doing in seventh grade talking shit to a grown man? But he did it, and we were like, man, this guy's kind of a badass, you know? Yeah, we had a guy like that, too, Hunter. We, uh, we get, were getting our car towed, and we were like, fuck it, we'll beat you guys up. You know, it was just one guy, and then he's like, oh, yeah? <laughs> and then two giant black dudes came out of the truck, and we're like, ah, because it was just two of us and now three of them. And my friend stood there. He's like, I don't give a shit. And we're like, come on, Hunter. Let's get out of here. And he stood there, and he goes, you guys are fags, and this guy's a real man, but we're still towing your car. And he towed the car. <laughs> yeah, but, like, this is what a real man is. Then they beat him to death. <laughs> but, the, but like, just so you know, that guy was cool yeah, that we just yeah. killed. And now he's the president's son. Now yeah. he was the uh, treasurer at a college, and we're like, how the fuck did you get that? He's like, we're going out tonight. Oh! I got all the alumni money. So he, he was still a piece of shit. But uh, I don't know what he's doing now, but he, he was like a tough kid. <laughs> it's funny that kid grows up and like, uh, I'm like, dude, how do you get fired from your job? He's like, swastikas again. I fucking, I can't stop. Uh, but it's like, we, we should believe that name actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was a, he, he's had a good heart, man. Yeah. People are people are fucked up. They're dealing with their shit. He had, he had bad stuff at home. You never know. You never know what people are are going through so i think like my mom didn't see that but i saw that so i like i felt for him you know? yeah he also oh, introduced totally. me to one of my favorite weird ass movies shout out uh monkey shines mm. old school i think it's a stephen king never heard of it it's stephen roots in it uh oh, that dude wow. who's scientology ground floor scientology's in it it's literally the funniest movie ever mm. it's like it's a horror but stanley tucci's in it oh wow. it's about a guy who's like an athlete that guy you know from the scientology doc oh yeah and he and he gets paralyzed he gets hit by a car and he's paralyzed from the neck down and they get him a monkey helper ah. the monkey is like his personal assistant the monkey can do anything and it's like oh my god this monkey's awesome and then it turns out people like his girlfriend leaves him and starts fucking another dude and the monkey gets mad and the monkey starts like acting out his rage and murdering people Whoa. so he has to turn against the monkey but he's still paralyzed it's Whoa. it's insane Sounds it's great amazing when i did donnelly's movie podcast yeah that's he was like you got to pick a movie that doesn't have great reviews and defend it yeah so that was it was defend your movie I remember it's a that. great premise for a pod yeah but i remember uh he watched it, he was like this is actually a pretty good movie i'm like it's pretty fucking good Damn. and it started the monkey cam it was oh, like from Letterman. Well, it was like from the monkey. He'd be in oh. running, but like it'd be from his perspective. Oh, I'll watch that. That it's sounds kinda, fun. It's a it's a great like ridiculous fun movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you're gonna laugh out loud a lot. <laughs> sure, sure. What is this? What's happening here? He's killing somebody with a syringe. <laughs> little, I, don't, uh, I can't see little, the picture. It's the monkey's cyanide. administering uh, medicine or something. Oh, okay. 
Damn. There's some dark shit in that movie. It's pr it's pretty crazy. Yeah, I'd say so. He's holding a fucking uh, razor with blood on it in the poster. <laughs> <laughs> well, the monkey will shave him. The monkey will oh, like. He learns it because he's. he's it, it's 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 a ridiculous premise, but like I love movies like that that are just like insane and and stick to it. And well, uh, if you ever heard that Patton Oswalt that old bit about how he's it's called Deathbed, and he's like. People had to come up, like get a call sheet. Come, we're, we're going to do a deathbed at six a.m. We got a lighting guy. Like they had so much production behind this movie, and that's how I think about with all these movies. Like there was a grip, there was a PA. Like I need my coffee now. We're doing Monkey Shine. What's the Rotten Tomatoes on that Salacuse? Because I wonder. I wonder what we got there. Yeah, it's hilarious. So you just, I mean, but the thing is, like, you don't know if you're making something awesome. Yeah, you never exactly. Know. Oh, and fifty-three. I, and I, 53. Yeah, um, not a great audience. 41 score. by the fans. Ooh. I stand by it. I think it's kind of fun. Mm. I love movies like that because you don't, they don't really make these anymore. It's just such a wacky idea. Exactly. It's like Hail Mary. And, and it's like now if you make it, it's got to be like a little more like you're making fun of it. Yeah. Like, I didn't see that movie Cocaine Bear, but it seems more like this. By the way, that's what it takes to sell a movie now. You have to dumb it down that much for an exec. You need the you need the synopsis to be the title. Yes. It's a bear that's on cocaine. Cocaine Bear. They're like, book it. Exactly. I know. That's how it is now. Well, you've seen that viral clip of Seinfeld going around. Have you seen that where he's like, uh, so I've noticed in comedians he's getting interviewed. Comedians and cars, you have a lot of uh, white men. He goes, we're doing this now. Here we go. And he, he just goes completely ape shit. I wish he was, if Jerry was just like, fuck you, yeah. you fucking dumb piece of shit. He does his version. He's like, great. Yeah, let's talk about this. This is what I want to talk about. And by the way, by the way, the guy interviewing him, a white guy. Yeah, yeah. I true, mean, it's like, true. okay, well, like. You what know, about your job? Yeah, should we, should we, should we fire give you your job away? Let's bring in uh, Cat Williams. I just think it's lame when people are counting. I think like diversity is good. Of course, uh, diversity is yeah. good. But like when you're just when you're counting and you're just like, yeah, play it. Mostly this white males. Look at this fucking twerp. Of 22 episodes. Yeah, that you've let's had. get into that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you, you, the he, crowd's with the him. The crowd loves it. Peter, what do you? Because you know what he's trying. You know what I don't like about this guy. It's a guy? gotcha. It's a gotcha moment. Exactly. He's trying. He's like, I'm gonna get one over on Jerry. Like yep. he's almost like proud of himself. I remember Guy Branham did this at the cellar, like years ago when like he oh, did the whole. He wrote this whole piece like fuck the comedy cellar and their white males oh, yeah. club. By the way, look at the lineups. It's pretty fucking diverse there. Yeah. But uh, it's booked by women. But yeah, booked by uh, an Israeli woman. But. Uh, Diverse lineups. They showcase all kinds of styles, all, people of all backgrounds. And I remember <laughs> on the Seller podcast, he was like, "How many trans people do you have here?" And Rich Voss goes, "You have your own TV show. How many trans writers do you have?" Oh. <laughs> and he goes, "None." And he's like, "Okay then. Yeah. What are we doing here?" And by Why? the way, there are trans comics at the Seller. Yeah. But like, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. Like these these moments. Like, they're, we're going to book the comics that are right for this room and the best comics. And it's like, you know. I, I of course like inclusion's great. Inclusion's important. Diversity's important. But also like the the idea of like these hall monitors. I know, I just, know. Just thinking like they're doing the Lord's work by trying to bust a guy. It's like Exactly. What do you what do you think? And they don't realize that guy doesn't realize he's being a bully. He's bully he's like, I'm gonna get you in trouble right now. This is gonna look really bad for you and it's gonna be very public and you're gonna get yelled at by the internet and all that and you're like that that's mean. You're being mean. I know you think you're saving the world, but you're doing you're doing a mean thing under the guise of moral superiority. Yeah, that's, that's why I don't that's like it. Exactly what it is. Play, play the rest of it. A lot of whitey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's what talking about going the crowd. On here? <laughs> but but I mean, oh, this really pisses me. Oh, off. he won't give him a minute. I love it. Really pisses me <laughs> off. People think it's it's the census or something. Yeah. I mean, this has got. <laughs> Represent the the actual pie chart of, of of America. Who cares? It's just funny, you know. Funny is the, is the is the world that I live in. You're funny. I'm interested. You're not funny. I'm not interested. By the way, his opener is Mario Joyner on the road, and like him at uh, what, wait, what geez. the fuck? Why is he with a white guy? Uh, <laughs> what the hell is that? Yeah, I know, right? But yeah, it's just like him and prop it up, Julie Louis Dreyfus. Now she's great and we all love her I, I don't know it's like hey, why, why do we have to count and now we're focusing more on race and now we're now we're divi dive, divi dicing it up based well, liberals on do, boxes like, they, and, they want you to like not see color but at the same time all about check about the it. boxes yeah, yeah, yeah there's yeah, something yeah. so insincere about that yeah. right mm -hmm. uh well elon musk you see that whole thing what? with mark cuban 
What? Oh, they went at it about DEI on Twitter. And uh, I like Cuban, but he was going hard, and Musk, I think, might be on drugs. But uh, Wait, you think? Well, he's like, he's really... You know, amped up. It is days. hilarious how powerful he is and how much influence he has. And then, like, I mean, there was that whole thing. I mean, when he went on Rogan and smoked weed, like, you fucked up stock. Stock went way down. Yeah, I mean, your shareholders are like, can you not get drunk on or high on camera? I know, I know, you're a businessman. Yeah. But either way, they go at it about DEI, and yeah. he's like, you know, Musk is like, this is actually inherently racist. You know, we're judging people based on the color of their skin, and mm. Mark Cuban's like, well, it's actually good to have diverse opinions. And he's like, yeah, I agree, but it should be the best. And if the best happened to be this, and Mark Cuban won't let up, and then Musk goes, all right, cool, well, let me know when there's a, a short Chinese woman on the Mavs. And you're kind of like, it's a good point. I, you know, I think Mark Cuban say, check and made. I just hired one. We signed a Chinese old woman point guard. We moved <laughs> Kyrie Irving to the bench. Yeah. We'll see how it plays out. And yeah. and I hope they do that because they're playing the Knicks soon. Ah. And, uh, <laughs> but that would be funny. That would be hilarious because they would just bench her. They'd well, put her in for one second. I mean, if you're running a company, I mean, this is... And I agree. I like Mark Cuban a lot. It's easy for him to say once he sold exactly the, the Mavs and his Mavs stock uh, got like three something mil. And Cuban is incredibly generous. He just gave like thirty five million to employees who work there. I mean, like as a like I'm I'm out of here. I mean, he's still there, but he's he's a minority owner now. I think. And that that medicine shit he does. I forget. I'm fucking up the name. Give that a Google. He makes medicine cheaper for everybody. Yeah. It's I a great service. He seems like a cool guy. And I honestly, if you're listening to this, Cuban, we'd love to have you on. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, and he does podcasts. Oh, yeah? He just did my old co-host, Julian Edelman's podcast. Oh, so there you go. We'd love to have him on. Um, I like now he's a minority owner. Minority owner. So he Because I think he is a great owner. Like, he Cost turned that plus. franchise around. But uh, anyone who's running a business, you want... The best. And you want the business to succeed. You want the best. Yeah. Like the Mavs. I'm sure it's 98% black, which is great. Actually, the best player is Slovenian. Luka. Luka. Yeah, Luka Magic. You go. But Kyrie's their second best player. I kind of want to play a Luka compilation. Can we do that real quick? Why? You love Luka? I fucking love him. Wait, yeah, he's great. His at, his sports or his, his sports company? Okay. I don't oh, know if he was funny Luka's or something. Sick. He's kind of funny. Okay. He's great. I don't know. The thing about Luka, though, is... I don't know if I'd want to play with him because he's like that. He does that. He holds the ball so long that if I was a teammate, I think it would take me out of it. Mm, like whereas Jokic, I feel like is, it makes quicker decisions. But like I do, I mean, Luke is phenomenal. He's what a great thinking, like a ball hog. Well, look, he's just look at this ISO shit he's doing. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, that was a nice pass behind the back. Yeah, that was sick. No, he's sick. I mean, he's like. He gets some Larry Bird comps for sure. When are we going to get a white guy from here? But look up Kyrie. Look up Best of Kyrie and tell me this guy is not like a magician. A guy from white guy from here? Well, we had like Stockton and Larry Bird, but I feel like who, who's the honky who's the from best? America? Who, I don't know why I can't think of him right now. Oh, there's a kid actually right now. Uh, Porzingis? Flag. Yeah, but he's from uh, that's Latvia. What that's what I'm saying. Like they're all from some other crazy place. Yeah, we got um this guy. I think it's Cooper Flag. He's from Maine, he's gonna be ridiculous. Oh, uh, the main event! Yeah, yeah, that guy's Look at Kyrie, awesome, man. I he mean, can dunk. Left-handed. This guy. Oh, wow. I mean, this guy's one of the. I think Kyrie's the prettiest player I've ever seen. Look at this shit. Uh -oh. Woo! At the but you're not even getting like his best crosses and shit. That's where he like. Wow, good name, Kyrie Irving. I mean, he, he with the ball, he's like a magician. Oh, Look at that. double fake with a turtle. Where's he from? I think he's from Jersey originally. New Jersey. I thought yeah. he was doing high school. Really? Yeah. Wow. Look at that. Everybody. Oh, look at that. Damn. I mean, you, you really see it on the replay where you're like, how the fuck did he do? And that's on like a world class defender, Drew Holiday. But uh, do you think Michael Jordan's sitting at home going, wow, is he watching basketball, you think? Or is I he don't sick know. of it? I don't know if he does, but he definitely like. I still think he thinks he's. As I shot him. I great. bet. I bet he's so competitive. He's still watching. Like I'm better. <laughs> I bet <laughs> I you. If he it. does, like uh, Jordan, and he he's probably right. Mm. Yeah. I mean, like I don't know, because Jordan's probably watching this guy. Like, yeah, that was a hell of a move, but he wouldn't have done that move on me. He's because Jordan was all defense every year too. Like people forget. Mm. Like you're dealing with the best on both ends, and it was, and there was pride in that. And I think like. He, if you watch interviews with Jordan, he'll be like, 
no player would ever beat me one on one. And they said, what if anyone could? He goes, maybe. He goes, maybe Kobe because he steals all my moves. Whoa! You know, but but he's like, he was like, watch LeBron, I beat him. Watch Carmelo, I beat him. Watch Kevin Durant, I beat him. But like, I think like. But then you see Kobe, and he's like, Durant is the only guy I would have trouble with because he's so fucking tall and hard to. But, you know, hey, look, the game evolves. It's, it's yeah. you know. I'm, I'm worried about it. I think uh, Jordan's hitting the cigars too much because he's getting the, the red eyes. Have you yeah. seen this? Let him live, man. He's, uh, he's the I, best ever. I, just, I mean, he can have all the cigars he wants. I'm just worried about the guy. I don't want him to get the high blood pressure. <laughs> It is funny that he could put, there's there's a clip of Jordan. I don't know if you ever seen this at Chris Paul's uh at, at Chris Paul's basketball camp and they go you get a free pair of Jordans if he misses one shot and he doesn't miss the oh. whole camp and he doesn't miss one shot. But then I think he just gave one to everyone anyway, but like I mean yeah, is this it? Mm-hmm. Oh, this is so fucking funny. What's this? You get a free pair of Jordan the whole camp if he misses a shot. Oh, the whole camp gets them. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's a lot look, of shoes. Look at this. If he misses Holy shit. This is a lot of pressure. Yeah, but this is what he lives for. He loves pressure. That's true. Now they hate that he's making it. <laughs> That's hilarious. They're booing him. <laughs> ah! <laughs> That's great. And they're putting for... Oh, but my God. I think God. he still just gives them to everyone, but it's like, that is hilarious that he's like, I'm going to make every shot. Fuck them kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a win-win. He got to make all of them, and they get the shoes. Everybody's happy, and he's still the goat. And you get to see, you're like, holy shit, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You get to see Michael Jordan. Boy, wouldn't you love a photo with him? Vitor has one. We got, we're having Vitor on soon. That's true. What's this story? Yeah, his story is amazing. Yeah, I love this. Kobe. Yeah, great game. <laughs> so I love a, is the audio good enough? We'll be in the garden. Oh. <laughs> There's a Mon Shumpert. You can't hear this, dude. The music's, the music's killing this shit. I know. Why do they do that with the music? Because they think it's more dramatic. But Shumpert was the shooting guard in the Knicks. He's a great storyteller. Hardy Kobe in the garden. I can't remember how much he had, but I know I had multiple steals against him. To where in the game, all, in my head, all I'm thinking of is when I have this conversation with my brother after the game, how I'm going to tell him how I stole a ball from Kobe. That is pretty like, insane. I'm thinking about all these things in my head. I'm like, so geek. The fourth quarter start. <laughs> Wait, you were already celebrating? Fourth quarter start. <laughs> <laughs> you got to love radio, Kobe guys. You had a great game. <laughs> Came, shot, fake, shot, fake, threw it off the glass, caught it, threw it to the corner. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> shot, get to the spot, shot, fake, spin, pivot over here, spit back on That's the That's just foot, unfair. Off the glass. Wow. What's over the glass. On? Then he pulled up from like 35 feet on some Steph Curry shit. Yep. Before Steph was doing that, <laughs> he pulled up and laced it. I'm like, they called a the timeout. Dan Tony looking at me. I'm like, bro, I ain't. <laughs> For the record, that guy, Shumpert, was like a really good defensive player. Yeah. What happened? He, he won a championship with the Cavs. He retired. Oh, wow. But he was he was a Nick, and he was – I love Shump. And, good storyteller, and, too. Yeah, he's good on podcasts. But, I mean, like, that the, the amount of disrespect to say to a guy, you had a good game and the game's not over, like, just enjoy that you had this. Yeah. Like, yeah. He, he just didn't – he was – I feel like the world kind of went to shit when Kobe died. I feel like things were okay before that. That, that you got, I think you got something there. It, it was, was just that was like January before COVID. Yes. Wow. I think you got something there. And our buddy Adam Glenn texted me before it happened because he works for TMZ, and he was like, "Kobe's fucking dead." And I said, "Shut the fuck up." No, he's not. And he goes, "I I I know you love basketball. I know you love Kobe." And like, I was like, "Fuck." Damn. That day was. The worst. That was a sad day yeah. and the end of uh, Ari's career. <laughs> <laughs> they both died that day. <laughs> that we got to have Ari back on here. Yeah, <laughs> I, I fucking miss Ari. I feel like I get an occasional like hoops text from him, but I don't see you because I don't work the stand. Oh you, yeah, you see him more than I see. He him. actually called. I haven't seen him in a minute, but he called me and he goes, "Hey, do you have this bit?" And we ended up talking for like an hour and a half. Cause yeah, he's, just, he's a fun guy. Yeah, he's a fun. Like he's just like a good fit on this pod too. He's just like. 
I just I know. kind of miss his energy. He can roll with anything, and he's doing Adrian Ipolucci special. And thought, he's oh, like, with Louie. With Louie. And uh, he's like, D- she has a bit. Do you have this bit? And I was like, no, nah, it's a little different. It's all good. And I'm excited about the special. Cause, uh, I love her. Louie's producing it, and Louie's pumped about it. and She's got maybe top ten jokes, favorite jokes of mine ever. Where she goes, I'm probably said it on the podcast. I think so, but say it Whatever. again. It's, Here it's we a go. great one. One more time, Adrian Iapolucci, shout out. We'll, we should definitely have her on at some point to promote that. But yeah, uh, my my boyfriend threatened to kill himself, and I was like, oh, great. Now I can't kill myself, or people are going to think we were in love. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, that's fucking brilliant. That's powerful. That's like a. <sighs> yeah, wow. great joke. Yeah, I, I, I emailed Louis the other day, like at like 2 a.m., because I'd just been rewatching Louis. Me too. And I was just like, Hey man, I haven't seen you around in a while, but like, just want to let you know, like, I'm just happy this show exists. Yeah. And he wrote me this like long, thoughtful uh, email back, and uh, well, he took two years off, so he's got <laughs> the time, but he's coming back. He uh, that show is like everything I love about uh, like so much, like the Comedy Cellar, New York City, I know comedy, just his comedy in general, uh, New York, like the way they portray New York in that city as like. As like a character against him. Yes, like, yes. Like like the way when there's uh, you know when there's drilling outside yeah. his place and then it's just in his apartment. Yeah, just drilling. exactly. Or you know the the scene the episode where he uh, I mean you should pull this clip where he's where Louis misses his flight. You know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh wait, is that the one where he has the vibrator in the bag no, and no, all no, that? No, no, it's the woman tells him why he missed his flight. It's like. This, to me, as a road comic, this just hits so fucking hard. Is it the one where he's sitting next to the fat guy? No, no. He's uh, talking to a woman at a desk. No, he's talking to a woman at a desk. Here. Hello Fresh is America's number one meal kit. They send pre-portioned ingredients with delicious recipes straight to your door. It's way cheaper than takeout, and you'll never waste money on excess food. With over 45 recipes and more than 100 seasonal add-on items to choose from every week, you'll keep finding new meals to love. Uh, yeah, this stuff's great. Uh, they got all kinds of good options, and uh, it's good if you want something quickly. Uh, you know, we're all busy. And oh, it's, yeah. It's good ingredients. You, you, you get it in there. HelloFresh even has breakfast you can make in a pinch Ooh. and fast 10-minute lunches. And since breakfast is the most important meal of the day, HelloFresh is giving all subscribers free breakfast for life with every single HelloFresh delivery. Hell, yeah. Go to HelloFresh.com slash drunk free. And use code DRUNKFREE for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash DRUNKFREE with code DRUNKFREE. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. I mean, the episode with Seinfeld is so fucking funny. Yeah. That, that, Gervais. Yeah. It's, it's like William Stevenson is in it. You yeah. see Greer Barnes, all these people. Like, Attell. Uh, I watched the rewatch the poker scene with Hannibal and Norton and Rick Chrome. Yeah, it's crazy to see all these comics. It was a different time. Yeah, it's got. It's like, it just speaks to me. It's just like a, you know. Oh yeah, that went viral. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, you're not gonna play it. I'm or? asking you. Oh yeah, I saw it. All right. Yeah, it's, this was big. I misgenders you I'm intentionally. So why she's talk, Why he's talking? You're talking. You just like misgendered again. Okay. Multiple times, gotcha. both of you have. Sorry. It wasn't intentional, but if you yeah. want to take it personal, that's it also. Well, she did do it intentionally twice. Okay. She's talking to me too. You said she, and then you said he. You're being condescending, and if you want to continue, Ooh. I have full authority escort you out the building right this moment. If you want to play that game with me. Okay. Would you like to continue three days before Christmas? I really don't mind. I'm Woo! <laughs> Damn, that guy is. He stayed in the pocket because he—you could tell he was furious, and he could have been like, "Get the fuck up!" But he just kept it pretty uh, cordial. Yeah. But you, but you could feel the anger. It was like impressive how you could feel the anger, but he still kept it together. For me, it was like the activist was saying, "This is my power, and I'm going to use it every which way I can." Yeah. And then he ran up against someone with a little more power than him, and he was like, "I'm folding." <laughs> Ooh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. He was like, "Oh, you can kick me off the flight." My little sh- my little power shit is nothing against what you have, which is TSA and because I want I want to get on that flight. I want to get on the flight. Yeah, and we've been on. I've been on both sides of that. Where like I've been the guy who loses it a little bit because sometimes they just fuck you. I've had them oh, sh- yeah. I've had them shut the door in my face when they didn't have to do that. Yeah, they just you run into power hungry people. Totally. 
occasionally, but I've also seen people mistreat them. And I mean, that's one of my fucking bits in my last special is a woman's just abusing a TSA woman and Vita and I just start fucking roasting her ass. Oh, yeah. Until Gary threatens to take his dumb shirt off. (laughs) And he blew it. Because yeah. she called him short. He goes, you should see me with my shirt off. I'm like, dude. That is we not had good. Her. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you we had her. We're, we're, good, we're good comedians. We could have just killed her here. Yeah. But, uh, but, <laughs> we had her. But like, so it's like when it's unwarranted, but I have seen it where they are so just fucking assholes. Oh, and, totally. and it's like, dude, they do have power over you. They have power over your schedule. That can impact your life. Like, Oh, yeah. You, know, you, that, you don't know what that person's traveling for. Exactly, exactly. I mean, Mark just went on vacation lost a day. I mean, like, yeah. He, he, there's a guy who's reluctant to take any time off, and then he does. And he's like, I knew I shouldn't have taken time exactly. off. Exactly. I know you're thinking that. I was. I was. Yeah. Totally. But I, one time, and they, they take it all so seriously, these TSA uh, people. Uh, even though they hate their job, it's just a fucking bullshit job, but they're like, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm basically, I'm an airport cop. I have power over the airwaves and all this shit. And I was running to catch a door, and I, it was closing, and I put my foot in it. And the guy closed the door on my foot. And he and he goes, "Are you crazy?" And you want to be like, "I get it, you're a TSA guy," but he looked at me like I was fucking. Oh, they say it like you punched a cop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, "Doors not closed." I'm trying to be silly about it, like, "Hey, doors not closed. I can get in there." And he goes, "You're you're messing with TSA, and this is a federal offense." And I'm like, "It's a fucking door." At the end of the day, I know we got to pretend it's this airport horseshit, but know. it's a goddamn door. It's literally like door. the floor is lava, and you're yes, like, yes. "We're not kids, dude." I. I, yeah, I had a thing exactly. that happened with that where we were the person couldn't get the door open on the you know for the uh, for the bags when you have to gate check your bags because it's one of those tiny planes and we all have connect flights and the person's like I don't know how to open it and I'm like fuck it and we're just like all losing it yeah and you see that one guy who's like ah, ah, and you're just like all right you got to chill the fuck out like yeah, this isn't yeah. worth I don't give a fuck if I miss but like uh, <laughs> but then like I tried to open the door to get help and he's like what are you doing you can shut down the whole airport I'm like well then you're a shitty airport uh-huh. right right. You run into the TSA person occasionally. I I travel with, you know, pepper spray sometimes just in my bag. Because, like, sometimes you'll see, like, I take long walks in these, some of these unsavory areas sometimes because I'm, like, I'm a city person. I like to walk. And we stay downtown. But, you know, sometimes you see, like, lunatics running at you. And I, I don't use it ever. But it's just, like, you have it on you in case, in case they have a weapon or something. You're like, okay, I can just, like, handle this. But they t- the guy took it. He's like, you can't travel with this. And I'm like, what's well, that annoying thing, though, now where it's like I can't, you can't order it to New York like it's legal in New York but you can't order it to New York yeah you know what I mean yeah. oh yeah right there's one place on 48th Street that sells it yeah but you can only buy two a year yeah and they fucking keep track of you is that right yeah well I hate cause look I get it there's rules it's an airport people's lives at stake but you know if I don't put the tray up and we land we'll be fine you know, or if I don't put my seat <laughs> Maybe up. that's what happened on that Alaska flight. <laughs> yeah, but I do it. I play ball. But yeah. sometimes you're like, all right. So I, I was in first class. I was in like 1B. I was in the window on the first row. I get off the plane and I go, ah, I left my AirPods on the seat. Literally sitting around right on the seat. So I turn around real quick. I'm like the second guy or third guy off the plane. And I go, hey, I left my AirPods. And the lady goes, it's a federal fence to come back on. And I'm like, I get it. We got the spiel, but I can just pick them up and I'll be out of, out of your hair. And she's just, well, can you get them? Like, I don't get what. Well, she's like, we have to wait till everybody deboards. That's oh. the procedure. And you're like, I get it. I know it. But there's a what do you call that? Uh, something of the law. Oh, uh, you letter, know, like, letter of the law, spirit of the law, spirit of the law. There's the spirit of the law, which is like, hey, you're not allowed to speed, but. If my wife is pregnant and she's going into labor, I'd like to get to the hospital, so I'm going to speed. And they kind of go, all right, I go, go, go. So there's that. So I'm like, it's right there. I'll knock it out. I know you got your rules, but this is different, kind of. And the pilot heard me bitching, and he goes, I got it. And he walks over, and he grabs it and hands it to me, and it was all over. So it's like, you could do it, but I get these rules, but like, come on. It's literally, it's, it's literally like teacher's pet, annoying. Like, yes. Where you're like, you don't have to be this way. Is there homework? Are we gonna have homework tonight? You know, all that shit. I want homework. Yes. Give me home- yeah, you're like, dude, please. Oh yeah. I got go. some shit. I got some. I wrote some stuff down. You got bits try. or peeves? I got a peeve. Hell yeah. I use. You ever go to one of these bathrooms where the toilet's facing the wrong way? The toilet, it's like a single, mm. and the toilet's facing the door. No. I'm like, oh, cool. So now if the lock's broken, some guy's just going to get a fucking full dose of full frontal here. You know what I mean? I'm like, 
I'm literally just facing the door. I think that happened to me. I can't remember if it was. A, I know. Okay, I went to see Lily Tomlin once. Yeah. In in Red Bank, New Jersey. Oh wow. And and uh, my biological father's wife is like best friends with her because okay. they because she was her hair dresser for years for like all the shows so we're back we're backstage and i'm peeing and i'm pretty sure lily talman saw my dick oh hey. wow yeah. lesbian I, yeah it didn't do, it didn't do anything for her uh, but yeah. uh yeah i was kind of like i was kinda like you gotta fix because i think the doors the, the toilet was it was i don't remember i'm check of the count basie theater maybe i'm wrong on this one but i wasn't a toilet recently where that happened i'm like yeah that's like who the hell Design that. Yeah. Just a dude who's he's like, I'm not washing my hands. I'm in a fucking hurry. Yeah. And I gotta get out. Let's be honest, that crack in the in the stall is is enough. You can get a look in there mm-hmm. with that, that hinge. Yeah, totally. How about the urinals that have a mirror? Have you seen it? <laughs> seen this? I haven't seen that. Uh, I don't want to see myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is that? So you could do your makeup while you're pissing? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, you know, it's an all gender bathroom. But <laughs> I don't like the mirror in the in the uh, barbershop. I, I got to look at my dumb face for half an hour. Oh, yeah. This is an eternity. Yeah. Now, where yeah, are you guys at on, on the phone at the barber? If I get a text, sometimes I'll like peek, but it, just to make sure it's not like important. But, yeah. Like, yeah, I don't. I try not to check. Same here. But I see guys just full on like, and then I think, well, that's rude. But then I go, well, what's the difference? It's not affecting the haircut. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer because I feel like in every sitcom, the guy and his barber are like boys and they're like talking shit. I've never really had a barber where I'm like, no. fucking, uh, you know, what do you think about uh, Randall last night, you know? Yeah. No. It's always like, my friend, how you want? Like, yeah. uh, a little off the sides. Okay. <laughs> like, Motherfucker. You don't even speak English, you Russian weirdo. I, it's also the same. I'm always like, uh, I never even remember. I don't know how I don't ever remember. They're like, what number blade on the side? I'm like, I don't fucking I don't remember know. either. All I know is round the back. You go round? I go round, yeah. I don't know if I go round or straight. Let me see. Oh, that's round, baby. Oh, I'm round. Oh, I'm right. round and ready to pound. <laughs> yeah, I spin you right round, baby, right round. Yeah, but I hate getting a haircut. It's yeah. the worst. Yeah, I fucking hate it. I hate it, it. You know what the thing? I, sometimes I'll go too short. So yes. I, I look like shit just so I don't have to go back for a while. It's Same. just like an annoying thing straight in the middle of your day. I, I don't... I don't like it. I don't like it either. I, I try to run this as a bit, but it was too stupid about how, like, my wife comes back. She's like, I got it washed. And then me and the girls talked about the 90 Day Fiance, and I got a glow up and all this. And I'm like, man, I got yelled at by a Ukrainian guy. And I paid out of the ass, and I got the fuck out of there, and now I hate myself. It's such a – the man versus woman haircut is such but a it, different experience. But it depends because a lot of them see, you know, like, you know, Korean ladies or something. So yeah, some, true. So sometimes they don't have the, the, the band are always right right i mean sometimes they do but sometimes they're just they're, there's a language barrier but uh I, yeah i tried to do one where i'm like i won't make reservations at the barber shop i don't either so i always get the shitty barber yeah the walk I get the up. guy who's untaken so they're like well all the all-star barbers like us are taken but that guy in the propeller head in the corner is all yours <laughs> uh stabby get over here stabby. <laughs> yeah. but uh that uh, doesn't really work either oh uh, i like it i, I tried to do a thing also about the difference between men and women, like uh, health, well, not health care, but like body upkeep, like women who go to spas, they get the, the cucumber, the mud bath, the deep tissue, and guys are like, rub and tug. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that'll I keep me up to date. Yeah, I get in, I get out, I get, you know, I get off, you know, this lady's doing a full on health day, and he's like, let's make it quick. I, I think, um, I think... We we we're like women listening to us complain about this right now. We're so fucking annoyed because of how long a hair appointment for a woman takes. Oh yeah, that's we're, true. We're literally like twenty minutes in and out, and it's annoying. And women are there for like three hours. Three hours. And by the way, it's like four hundred dollars sometimes, or something crazy like that. Yeah. Now, have you ever seen a woman get the uh, the coloring, and they've got the foil out with the different layers of foil, and there's like eighteen pieces of foil, and then the painting of the hair. It's it's a bananas job, and you're yeah. like, I am so glad I don't have to sit through that. It looks so weird. So like, do weird. You, do you get fucking HBO with that thing? No. <laughs> I, I know. And then they come out, they look great, but in the process, you're like, whoa, I don't want to see the sausage being made, because it is wild. <laughs> it's like oh. alien-like. Have I you got- noticed your haircut's getting more expensive, too? They yeah. go way up. I don't, way I don't, up. I don't, I never really got, right now my place is expensive just because I just started going to one like right by me. But like, yeah. you, when I lived on the Upper West Side, they were fucking, I was getting away with like $28 haircuts for like New York. That's pretty damn good. Oh, yeah. I remember 14 yeah. back in the day. 14 was big. And you give them a 20. 
I want Blake on this show, dude. Oh, he's a cool guy. We I should, met him. We, I love Blake. He's a funny guy. He's dude. a funny guy, and he's super nice. And he's, I think, still retired. So maybe we, maybe Ooh. not. Blake, are you listening, dude? Hit him up there, Peters. We, we're, yeah, we're fans. Yeah, I like Blake. He did my show at New York Comedy Club, and I'll tell you, all the women were swoon in. He's fucking. He was an incredible. I mean, he had a run where he was just like embarrassing people yeah he became the dude that like you wanted to hurt on the other team because he was throwing down disrespectful dunks mm. and i kind of love that he might be the last white he's not white american he's half is he he's yeah, gotta he's, be he half be he half. looks like michelle wolf <laughs> <laughs> he's gotta be half white pull it pull it i give that a uh, wikipedia i think he's a halfy is that a term i, mean, yeah, I guess <laughs> <laughs> he's gotta be half irish or something right yeah, Griff. Griff he, is an Irish that, name. That Detroit year fucked up his career. He got no respect for it because he was playing hurt and he took him to the playoffs on like one leg and I think it just fucked his leg up. Mm. There you go. Because he was like still balling that year. He was awesome. He did a roast. He was kind of like getting in the comedy world for a minute. He did Montreal with one year, I remember. Yeah, he just did a thing with, like, Stavi just talked with him about something. Really? Yeah, he, he, he likes comics. Okay, it's great. Afro-Haitian descent and... Gail Griffith, uh, Griffin, his wa- his mother uh-huh. is white. Thank you. There you go. Hey, Obama as well. <laughs> Half white. I'll take credit for that. Hey, we get no love on the white side. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they always say half black instead of half white. Exactly. So that was like, remember J.L. Covan? Yeah. He I had a great JL. bit about it. He's like, we got our first black president. He's like, slow down. Half black. You know, he had a whole thing. It was really funny. And he's half black, so. He's the guy to do it. I sound like Gilbert Gottfried, half black. (laughs) (laughs) I got, let me try. Yeah, uh, give me a bit. Let me try one on you. Has this been done? I'm worried this has been done. You know, as you know, a lady I'm seeing has a little pooch. Oh yeah, we met Winnie. And I take Winifred uh, on walk. So, you know, I'm picking up the poop and it's those same doggy bags forever, those thin little bags. You pick up the poop, you feel everything. Yeah. And I'm like, this is the worst. I feel everything. And then I fuck in a condom and I'm like, I feel nothing. Oh, I like it. I like it. And you can same. fuck in the ass. There's poop. It really. <laughs> you feel the poop with your well, dick. Well, it's still, uh, it, it really depends on what you're doing. Right. Right? Right. Also, well, they're both warm. Yeah, that's true. The shit is warm. So is the vagina. It's a good point. You want to wear the glove to, to you know, it's gross. It's poo. And you want to wear the condom yeah. so you don't get the bad part, the the pregnant or the infected. So, yeah. yeah you're trying not to get something bad. Yeah, I see both There's on the- There's something here, though. Yeah, definitely. Right. I like it. You see both on the ground in New York. <laughs> I see bags of shit and condoms. <laughs> I guess it depends on the bitch, right? Oh! Yeah. I don't want to use bitch as a punch, though. Oh, damn. But, you know, I think it's like, uh, you know, who is a Russman Eve use of a joke? Like, you see a condom on the street, and you're like, who is this mixed-up mystery man? He's like, <laughs> he's reckless enough to have sex in the street, yet responsible enough to put a condom on. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe the angle is your girlfriend gets mad if you don't have both ready. You know, maybe she's like, you know, hey, you got to take Winnie out and better bring, better bring a bag. And then you're like, hey, we're going upstairs. You better bring a bag, you know, and, and yeah, you're you like. Better, you better wear a condom. Fuck, what, really still? Yeah. yeah. I guess it's like funny. It's like, yeah, well, the problem is one you want to feel. Yeah, true, like, true. I've never been like, man, I want to I want a raw dog pick up this poop. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's the angle. Whoever's making the By dog bag. Raw dog. Oh, that's good. Well, maybe whoever's making the bag should make condoms. Those two should come together. The the condom guy yeah, should make the, the shit pick up. Yeah. You know, you'll, ne- you'll never th- see extra thin doggy bag. Yeah, yeah. You need a magnum yeah. doggy. <laughs> doggy style also, yeah. by the way. True. There's a lot here, I think. Oh, Winnie. Uh, fucking, we got, we'll have Winnie back next week. It sucks when she's not here. Man. I know. The it's comments. Just a, it's just a good energy. They love Winnie in the comments. Everyone loves you know, who, who could see that dog? If you see that little pooch and, you, and you're angry, you got to look within. Yeah, that's true. That dog's a mirror. Yeah. I like that. No, that's big. I, like that. I think you got something with the bag there. Trojan should make dog bag, dog shit bags. Yeah. Yeah, for your pleasure means you feel nothing. Right, right. Yeah, yeah that's good. 
<laughs> then you're like, oh, I got a little. There was a hole in it. <laughs> <laughs> it I, I broke it. What do you got? Remember tearing condoms? Those were the those were wild nights. Yeah, I remember we were riffing a bit about. Uh, I think you used me in one of your old old bits mm. where I was like, uh, I you were like my friend. He's an idiot. he's like you should uh, you should put water in the condoms to make sure the girl didn't poke a hole in them. Yeah. Oh yeah, how'd that go? What was we the were punch? like, yeah, that turns on women, uh, suspicion and paranoia. Oh yeah, that was like an old Norman bit. I'm in the sink, like, hold on, honey, let me just check this. Although Drake did that shit. That's true. That's true. Or he put hot sauce in it, right? Yeah. Which for some reason, women got mad at him. He's like, hey, I'm just, you know, I'm trying to kill this kid. Because a lot yeah, of it's one of the things you get mad at, him. but what you're doing is pretty fucking exactly, weird too. exactly. Uh, uh, uh. uh. Okay, is this anything? So, uh, you know, I'm getting older, and I discovered I have a gluten intolerance. I still eat it, but, you know, it, it fucks me up. But it's hard because my mom is like a chef, big Italian foodie lady. So she's making pasta, pizza. She bakes her own bread. So I go back home, and she's like, I baked a giant uh, loaf of whatever. And I almost have to come out to my foodie mom that I'm gluten-free. And it's uh, it's almost like she's trying to set me up with a woman. And I'm like, I can't have the yeast. Or, or something. Something there where I'm... It's almost like coming out. That's what I'm you're saying. Like the gay yeah. guy. Yeah, you're like almost like... Uh... I'm coming out of the closet. I can't have gluten. I'm coming out of the pantry. It's funny for like the South. It's like, it could be funny if the angle was like your family's like liberal. So this is like your version of having to be like, I'm gay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, saying you won't eat bread. And she's like, oh my God. I never saw this coming. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, she's like. Uh, I tried the yeast line, and that that did pretty well. But that feels like there's more there. Yeah, you. So she's making pizza, pasta, and you're like, I can't eat any of this shit. Yeah, and I'll eat it, but I'll puke. Yeah, <laughs> like it disgusts me, like a vagina. Yeah, I'll eat it, but I'll I'll feel I'll feel like I'll feel, I'll feel like shit afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'll regret it. I'll feel bad. I'll be like, ugh. I'm only doing it for you. Yeah. It's not permanent. Maybe, yeah, there's maybe something about, like, uh, make, maybe it's like a conversation you're having with a gay friend. Oh, yeah. Or it's like, oh, I had to fucking pretend to, oh, that's good. to be straight for my family. And you're like, tell me about it. I have to, I can't eat any of my mom's uh, bread. Yeah. You know, or like. Uh, and then we, we can compare, like, I, you know, I, women make me sick. I'm like, bread makes me sick. Huh. Or maybe he did come out. Maybe he was like, I told him I was. Oh, maybe he shows up with his boyfriend, and I have to show up with gluten-free flour, and they're both like, oh, <laughs> you know, this is horrible. I'll play with it. You the... never told me this. Yeah, maybe yeah. It, could just, it could be maybe more subtle. You never told me this was this was something you liked. Right. They'll just do all the, the things people say to a gay guy. Yeah, what else would they say? And also, there's gay bars, and I have to go to these. I have to go to certain restaurants. How long have you known? Oh, that's good. You know, or like, uh, I was born this way. <laughs> I just, yeah, you know, I used to eat, I used to eat regular bread, but I knew. <laughs> hey, I that's knew good. Something like uh, I used to. Yeah, and I'll still shovel it down because you know I can go both ways, but I prefer the no bread. So yeah, yeah, I could tell when I was doing it on stage, it was they were like uh uh, and then it isn't that the worst. Yeah, so it's I think there's something like, there. It's literally like. You're like fucking someone good and your dick just stops working. Yes, yes. And they're like, oh, here it comes, baby. And then nothing. Like, sorry. Yeah. All right. You got others? I got, I got, I got, yeah, I got others. Hit me with another one. All right, let me try one. Um, see what we got. Let me see. Um, we got Liz sending me pictures of her pug. (laughs) <laughs> oh, that could have gone. That got that. That could have been real. Dirty. Oh, uh, I, someone, a woman I know, sent me a picture of her uh, breastfeeding, mm. and uh, and she wrote, "Sorry if that's the female equivalent of a dick pic." And I was like, "If I send you one of my penis and a baby sucking, that's worse." <laughs> <laughs> Is that something? That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, she didn't write back. Ha ha. <laughs> oh well. Well, it's funny because. I used to have a joke about how like breasts are private parts, but if you're breastfeeding, it's it's okay. It's okay, but it doesn't work with a uh, uh, shirtless man. Like a shirtless man is okay, but if I breastfeed, 
I go to jail or something like that. Like my kids look at my nipple. I went I went way dirtier and darker. Yeah, the but baby I, sucking me off. <laughs> that's true. That is dark. <laughs> well, I'm saying I wouldn't do it. Right. Why don't you could do something maybe with a dog? Like something. You hear that, Aaron Rodgers? I wouldn't do it. <laughs> don't be talking no shit. Yeah, Fauci. Yeah, yeah, that's a tough one. Breastfeeding. Well, it's tough because oh, maybe there's something like we like tits. But when you put a baby on, now it's like nurturing and serious. It's weird. No mm-hmm. one's like, woo, baby. Yeah. You know, like tits are fun until you put a baby on it. Now it's real. Yeah, tits are, uh... yeah, baby really, uh, a baby shows up and tits become like a job. Yes, yes. It's almost like, it's almost like lunch break, lunch break, then a baby shows up back to work. Right, But right. like, it's, uh, yeah, baby runes. Yeah, like it's not hot when you're using something as its function. Yes, you know that's I mean? interesting. Right, I'm trying to think of it. You know, it's like, uh, hey, oh no, that's no good. Um, you know, if you like, you 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 use an apple. Uh, you're like, hey, I like an apple, but then some guy's like, I'm gonna make a bong with it or something. Yeah, but something, the, yeah. Something, well, that that. Bong is actually better than an apple. Yeah. All right, hold on. But th- there's a perfect analogy an actual, here. An actual function, like something like... Uh, oh, maybe you got a, f- a beer funnel and someone's like, hey, we got to fix this pipe. We need that funnel or something. Somewhere you use it for the actual real thing. Takes the yeah, fun out close. of it. Yeah, so close. Using it for the real thing or like... Uh, anal sex. Anal sex. What do you mean? Oh, I see. Oh, that's interesting. I'm not a big anal sex guy. We've been through this. I'm not either. Um, yeah, the function. But it's weird because dicks are scary either way. That's interesting. Like, if I show you my dick in a photo, it's like, whoa, well, what are you doing? Well, there's no kid involved. That was the joke I was making, though. Yeah, that's true. But the sucking is where it gets... Scary. Too, too offensive, you think? I uh, well, I, I think you would pull it I'll off. I'll throw it up at the cellar tonight. We'll see what it hits. Even if there's a, maybe it could be like, look, even if there's a kid in the photo with me, it doesn't have to be sucking. Yeah. And there's a clientless joke in there. The yeah. function thing is interesting to me. Yeah. To use it for its function. God, there's things out there that we're not thinking of. All right, hold on. All right, we're, we're getting what do you got? we're getting uh, we're getting weary here. Yeah, what do you got? Um, is this anything? Uh, no, oh, this is stupid. Did I do the Yelp joke on you? I think I did. I don't know. Where I, I I I love Yelp because it's not helpful at all. It's just like a it's like a therapy session disguised as a restaurant review. Mm-hmm. You know, you read the comments like, "How's this Thai restaurant?" And some lady's like, "I went to the restaurant. The waiter looked like my ex husband who died nineteen eighty nine of leukemia. I cried at the table. The napkins were soft. Four stars." And you're like, "I don't know anything about the food, but I know you're bipolar or yeah. whatever." And then I'm like, "This is not helpful at all." And my friend goes, "That's why you can't Yelp sucks now because people are entitled. They complain." People didn't act like that in the 50s. And I go, well, you can't have Yelp in the 50s. It would just be a bunch of black people like, we didn't get in. And that kills. And I'm like, uh, I do a whole act out where I'm like, it looked good through the window, though. Maybe we'll go back in 14 years. And then I do a whole thing about how the internet, if the internet was around back then, it would be super dark. You know, like uh, a Native American guy, like, fuck Cheesecake Factory. They built it on my TP and they don't take pelts or something like that. But uh, I don't know where to go with it. Well, that's a whole, that's a whole other big premise. The first part seems done, but the second part is like how dark the internet would have been. Right, right. That might be too big. Like we already have footage of JFK. Right. <laughs> Think about how graphic that shit would be. Yeah, and I almost don't want to open that can of worms of a bit because it that could be a it's huge. It's huge. Well, it's huge. It's just you have to. That's the problem is you're casting such a wide net. Like, yeah, you got to find what it is. Hmm. Um. I thought about like fire hose spraying black people, and they're like, you know, I barely got a sip, one star. Oh, Pepsi, Pepsi. Oh no, like a, it's like a smart water ad. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, smart water. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, it, I got a lot of like bits that are like the beginning works, and I then know, it falls off a cliff. Me too. I fucking stink. Yeah, comedy's hard. Comedy's fucking hard, bro. You, you, like, you have an hour cooking. You're going to do a special. Yeah, no, at, nothing. At one point, those jokes were not working. Like, some will work out of the gate if you're lucky, but most of them you had to work at and you had to tinker with. 
I'm gonna have to edit some of this uh, quiet time here. Yeah, you could edit this, right? Oh, this is like a good. very broad idea, but something I thought of is like I read the, a study that five alcoholic drinks per week could shorten your life. But I think the problem is for most people, without alcohol, life is too long. Ooh, you know what I mean? Like alcohol is like editing. Like if you're talking to someone bored, alcohol is like a direct. It's like a. It's like an editor. It's making key edits. Yeah, like true. someone keeps talking, you're like, oh my god, cut here. We'll cut here, and I'm back. You know? Yeah. Something like that. I don't know how to say this. Yet. Yeah, that's it's like, interesting. It's like an observation. It's not. It's fucking trash. I stink. No, I mean, it's. I do that with the family, you know, your family function. You go to Thanksgiving and you're like 10 minutes in, you're like, I need a drink. I'm talking to Nana. I'm talking to Aunt Susie. I'm talking to fucking Uncle Bob. And I'm, I'm Uncle Bob's talking about work. Aunt Susie's talking about her cat. I'm dying here. I need a drink. Yeah, it's nothing. What else you got? Drinking's like an editor. Um, also, it's who's got the time travel bit? You know, you ever like driving somewhere you start drinking you're like well, that's Ooh. a tell that's, oh, that's a, tell. a tell so true so that's yeah maybe that's too close anyway so fuck that bit uh, all right oh oh i had something i lost it hold on i'll find it shit god damn it where did it go oh this is stupid just oh my shit sucks punch me right in the balls here right. um i'll try just tell me no and then i got another one my doctor goes, uh, I did a checkup, and he goes, how are you sleeping? I go, I'm sleeping horribly. And he goes, well, look, it's, your chart says you're drinking a lot. You're, you're probably not sleeping because you're drinking. I'm like, well, I don't think that's true because every time I sleep, I drink, I pass out. <laughs> you know? And like, no one goes to a bar, sees a guy passed out, and goes, well, that guy's sober. The only problem is, it's like, you know, you, you fall asleep, but it's just bad sleep. I know. It's, <laughs> it's one of those, like, the logic is bad in the joke maybe that's part of it though maybe you say like isn't it weird though because alcohol helps me fall asleep it's just it keeps waking you up yeah i guess so it's almost like uh but you're, you're like you're past that it's like you fall asleep the way a guy like knocks you out oh yeah it's not right like, it's not like you fell asleep in a healthy way that's true but on paper, you are sleeping. You're sleeping. You know, so it, it, it is a gray area. But yeah, I sleep like shit when I'm drunk. Same. Just All right, let me, up. Oh, yeah, let me try a real one. A real one. All right. My friend, we were, me and a friend, he's a black guy, and we were. I was like, man, my comments, look how mean these comments are just on YouTube and everything. And he was like, oh, your comments are mean? He showed me it's just like all N-word, N-word, N-word. And I was like, all right, well, you got me there. Yeah. And you got to stop posting. <laughs> that's what I said. That's part of the joke. <laughs> I go, I'm sorry I wrote that. That hits. But then I go, uh, I go, it sucks about the N-word thing because you just get called that. If you could find a way to do an OnlyFans for racists, Wow. That's so funny. if you could get their money, like, yeah, just call me anything and you could pay me. Yeah. It's like an OnlyFans, like I'll show you my tits. I'm not gonna show you my tits at work, but if you pay me, I'll show you. Yeah, send it all to Howard University. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then eventually you can make so much money you can like give it back to the community and yeah. you know, how'd you build the rec center? Oh the Kanye got on the racist OnlyFans, so you know, it lit up. Or you could do it with Palestine and Jews, you could do it with everything, and now you're making money off the hate. Yeah. But I, it's it's one of those jokes where people are like, whoa, man, what are you talking about? Are you trying no, to promote? No, no, I think there's something there. I think there's something there, too. I, I, but I like that. When I, I say think... racist OnlyFans, they're like, what? You, you, you want to be racist? Fans, I'm like, no. You know, they like, should make OnlyFans for racists. And I'm like, that way you can just, you know, they're, they're going to want to. I guess the only problem is why would they pay to. Because they can do this? it for free. That's, That's the, the hard part I can't crack. It's literally free speech. Yeah, it's hate speech, but it's free speech. That's true. That's true. That's the, I guess that's the flaw with the bit because it's a, it's clever. But the, if they could say it to you, like you're just standing there, and they go, "All right, say it," and you got you get a guy going, "All right," and he says it on Facetime or Zoom, something yeah, like Twitter that. Twitter should should penalize. You should have to pay for Twitter, and they penalize your account. If you if you if you call someone a slur, right, right, that would, that would never happen. No, but if you go to and this, I don't want to pay for Twitter, so it's a terrible idea. I know, I know, it's tough. It's it's if I could find a way around that part where they say it for free already. Yeah, because if you're gonna if they're gonna say, it, you might as well get paid for it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, paywall. Plus, if you put anything behind a paywall, it slows down. So if you got races behind a paywall, it would cut it down like seventy. percent Maybe that's the angle. More like, man, it's like we gotta, we gotta start, we gotta get races behind a paywall because then they're gonna be like, man, we're wasting money. Yeah, yeah. It's like I have a podcast I used to love. They went behind a paywall. I don't even listen anymore. Yeah. It's the same with the N word. You know, like you're you're in a car uh, you're in a car accident with an Asian guy, and you're like, man, if I could afford it, I would really. Oh, I gotta sign up. Fuck it. 
you know yeah, it's, a, it's it's all clever it's just not practical mm -hmm. you got to find a way to make it actually work yeah the logic isn't all there it's hey man this is what bits this would look our bad and average is not horrible it's just what about this yeah hit me okay i might have cracked it you black people should copyright the n-word copyright it now every time they say it, you get royalties Fuck, uh, what's that word? Uh, reparations get royalties. Because <laughs> if they copyright it, like Trump copyrighted, uh, you're fired, didn't he? I think he did, or he tried to. So now when you say it, you got to pay him, black people should copyright the N word. So if you say the N word, then the guy says you're fired, both of them have to pay up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. But, like, you know, we play music on here, and they're like, whoa, whoa, don't play music. You got to pay the royalties. What if that was like that with the N-word? I know. It's, it's a, it's no, a I, I, far fetch. It's something here, though. I, yeah. I hear you. It's just, it's fucking hard. This is, we're, look, we're showing the ugliness of this process. I know. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I guess so. Let me run one on you. Please. So, I, I was remembering, like, I used to be a kid. This is how I'm trying to do this, but I used to be like. Same here. <laughs> I used to be a kid. We all did. And, uh. When I was like seventh grade, I was lactose intolerant. Oh, and, really? Uh, yeah, I, and but you know, when you're told that, you're like, "Fuck that shit!" I'll, I'll rebel. So I would just eat pizza like every meal, mm. and uh, you know, Big Mac stuff like that. And you're like, uh, "Oh, you just you're just like, fuck it, I'm gonna I'm gonna fight back." And then I remember one day, you know, we'd go see movies in Times Square. We'd like double up, we get one ticket, just see movies all day. Yeah. And I was in a Times Square bathroom, just like shitting my brains out, just like horrible and uh like liquid out of me and through the crack i hear a black boy black uh boy and his father go uh the dad goes that boy has got the shits <laughs> and they started laughing uh -huh. and they like high-fived i was like it's so weird that like a low point in your life is like a bonding moment oh, for yeah. another person i think that's where like the angle was maybe sure where you're like that's probably like you know like for me i was like man i gotta like i gotta like turn my life around yeah but for them they were like that was the closest i ever felt to my father <laughs> you know what i mean i don't know what to but, it's like a funny observation that is funny but it's so true like charlie sheen that whole thing where he was melting down the whole country yeah. was like whoa this is amazing yeah yeah and it brings people together ironically when someone else's other what, people's misery brings you together we watch intervention as a family yeah. you know like this is the saddest p point in this guy's life isn't that weird yeah a guy gets you know a, like a, a football thrown is nuts you send it to your friend on instagram like dude look at this yeah you're bonding maybe the angle could be because that's good maybe the angle could be like that's what people should do to bring other people together forget like make a wish and all this i've got to you got to fuck your life up just to help other people like fuck superman i get the shits i'm bringing people together i, I don't know somehow you can manufacture horrible things just to help someone else i don't know <laughs> yeah. yeah for like uh it's like city harvest or something yeah, yeah. It's like for a benefit yeah it's like, come yeah. see this guy i feel like uh yeah some see some see this guy uh I feel like I, I don't fucked up note though. That's what the internet's become. That's the problem. It's I like, know. I, the internet has become like, watch me eat this fucking, um, I, I, you get a, a free burrito if you can eat this eight pound burrito in, in 10 minutes. Yeah. You just watch a guy do horrible shit to his body and you're and like, you're that's like, like entertainment now. Yeah. And you kind of love the guy for some reason. You're like, look at yeah, this because guy. It's, he's putting himself through misery for our entertainment. Well, I think that's why America's Funniest Home Videos was a hit because people were like, sure, I got kicked in the nuts by a Shetland pony, but I made 10 grand and now I'm famous. Did they get 10 grand for a video? If you won. Well, if you won the the number one prize. Man, it sucks to not win. I know. But you were on TV. Yeah, I guess. That was something back in the 90s. <laughs> you go home, you go to school, you're like, I was on America's yeah. Funny, I kicked my dad in the balls. <laughs> I don't know, man. But at I'm least fucking, it was a win. I stink. I got nothing new. I feel like my new sh shit is like either hitting or it's just garbage like this. Right, yeah, same. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. And I've been getting some nice messages like, hey, have you thought about this angle? Have you tried that? And yeah. Some people are really uh, on it. I got a wreck. Please. The book, it's a short book, The Friends of Eddie Coyle. Mm. It's uh, supposed to be a great movie too. I want to, yeah. Robert Mitchum's in the movie. Oh wow! I haven't seen it. I'm gonna watch it. It's fucking awesome. It's like 200 pages. It's like easy read. Killer. Yeah. It's like a cool ass old school like Boston noir. Oh really? Yeah. It's really cool. Okay. Um, good writing. Um, 
Boy, I you do a in, lot of reading. I was in a bookstore in Springfield, Missouri, and they just like, I pulled over the back and Ross McDonald was mm -hmm. one of the quotes being like, this is an awesome book. And I was like, all right, I, I like his shit. So I was like, I'll check it out. I like noirs. I just like the language and stuff. And I like, like seeing plots unfold. Yeah, I like that too. But you know what I don't like about books is I don't like people seeing what I'm reading. Like, are you on the train with that thing? And then you get some guy going, hey, Eddie Coyle, read that last year. I used to read a Confederacy of Dunces on the train. Yeah. And I got a million people like, oh, great book. And I was like, let me read the fucking thing. It's yeah. nice, but it was like interrupting me. I was on the flight, so I don't care. I just, I kind of like the feel of a book more than a Kindle. I stopped using the I Kindle. Agree. I agree. I, Kindles are awesome, but I, I just, I, I hate having another thing to charge. Yeah, between good point. the phone and the computer, and I actually like I have one of those. This is so stupid. I said I hate having other things to charge, but I use regular books, and I I have one of those neck light things for bed because <laughs> sometimes flights get dark too. True, you know? true. So I, but uh, neck light. Wow, nerd alert. They're like twenty bucks. They're great. Really? Yeah, they're fucking awesome. That's I'll, a wreck. Get a, get a neck light right. thing. Because yeah, you sleep next to someone, they might be sleeping. And you true. Can, and that way you could still read. I'm going to get one of those when I eat my Yeah, wife that's the one out. I have. They're like 20 bucks. They're great. Oh, wow. That one looks a little too cheap. Look at that. Okay. Yeah, the Kindle is like a sex robot. You want the real thing. You want the book. <laughs> you know? That's good. And then something you're like, there. I don't want another thing to charge. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. You should, you should try it. There's something there. Take that's, it. That's you. I don't use a Kindle, so. But that's you. Um, any Rex? Uh, let's see. I saw a movie. Oh, Anatomy of a Fall. Yeah, I love that. Very good. That was killer. I watched it. Very good. Heavy oh. duty. Good oh, dialogue, too. Great dialogue. Did we talk about this already, Matt? You might have brought it up, and then I watched it. I got to fight with Ron on, because I thought the uh, the snow movie with the uh, the rugby team that, that lands in the snow on Netflix. It's like, I think it's Argentinian or something. Yeah. You liked it? I didn't like it that much. Oh, and he did? And he was like, and he's a cunt. Ronan hates everything. And he yeah. was like, I thought it was great. I was like, really? I thought the dialogue was weak. I did watch it dubbed. So that might have been my problem. Oh. But yeah, he's a, he's a hater. Oh, yeah. I feel like he only really likes movies for the most part if it's like just misery. Yes. If it's yes. just like painful and like, Brutal, then he likes it. Totally. Look at that. Fucking killer score. Yeah. Oh man. It was a it was a good script, I thought. I liked the uh Anatomy of a Fall. Yeah, I totally wrecked that one. That was cool. Yeah, Deaf Kid. It has a lot of great twists and turns and it's really and well. That dog out. is beautiful. Yes. What a, what a cool look. I was like, man, everyone's a good actor, even that fucking dog. Snoop. That was an awesome uh Yeah, and the main woman was so man, it's kind of like I guess a loaded year for best actors and stuff because yeah. I saw she was nominated and I was like oh she's going against all these other good yeah. actors too but hey movie, I feel like movies and shit is picking up like they're they're really we had a Scorsese Michael did you watch Ferrari no I gotta see it is I gotta good? see it too I, uh, you know it's a Michael Mann with Adam Driver and yeah. uh, the story is incredible so I'm, I love him but I haven't heard anyone talking about it I think it's out it's out yeah no one's mentioned good. it I mean Michael Mann is just such a fucking beast killer I just love Michael I mean I'm wearing a fucking Michael Mann shirt right now dude oh I didn't even put thief. that hey, thief look at that James Caan alright yeah no one has brought this up so I can't imagine it. what's the the rotten to me I feel like it's gotta be good though it's it's Michael Mann dude. I'm gonna watch it alright alright 72 I'll what's, take a 72 74 alright yeah it's worth seeing that's though. a C plus I bet it's cool though the story's really good just the real story. I don't know anything about it. Oh, cool, cool. This guy, uh, it was Lamborghini and Ferrari. They hated each other. And they were, one was a tractor company. And then they were like, I bet I can make a better car. And he was like, fuck you. So he made a car, and then they would race them. It's it's fun. Damn. Italians. Can't go wrong with Italians. Is he? Is this the second time he's played an Italian in a row? Didn't he just do, he did House of Gucci. He did do House of Gucci, but I heard, I heard that was good. House of Gucci? I heard it was good. Really? Yeah. Look at I that. That's pretty good. Not bad. I mean, I mean, not, he definitely he definitely looks better as Adam Driver. Not ugly enough. Yeah, he looks like Tilda Swinton on the left. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, those are the day. Hey, Patrick Demp. He's an actual race car driver in real life. Really? Yeah, yeah. Him. That's pretty cool. Corolla. A couple other guys actually. Yeah, Corolla is like he's such a manly dude. He always talks about that shit. But. I know. Race cars. Um, I asked him why he does it. He goes, you know why? Because when you're on that track, you can't think of anything else. I was like, all right, I can get that with booze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, try drinking yourself, stupid. Yeah, that works. That'll work. But no, I get it, the rush. I mean, I, I understand. 
Like there's it, something, it's hard in this day and age to like actually be present. So I, I do get that. True, true. Present and and you heard it from me, a guy who can't drive a regular car. <laughs> you ever see Rush? What's that? That's a Ron it, Howard movie about is race that car. Yes. Yeah, I saw that. It looked good. I didn't it's see good. It. It's a true story as well. Nicky Lauda burns himself up in a car. I don't want to give it away, but it's really good. Oh, you know what's a good one? Do you ever see the documentary Senna? On yes, on great movie. That was really cool. Great doc. Yeah, that was awesome. That guy was a hunk, too. I don't know shit about Formula One, but that is like the rage now, man. Huge. Like, crazy it's, i feel dumb for not because people love it i tried i really tried to watch it i was kind of bored i'm bored it's i think you got to get into the, like the i think any sport is like you can get into once you like learn it and know the rivalries and the personalities and the politics and all that stuff but mm -hmm. uh i'm just so into the basics I'm, I'm just so into basketball i like football i like i like baseball yeah ho i like hockey i'm kind of good I, I don't need a keep i mean i need to do other shit well the problem with this is it's so subtle which sounds weird because they fucking crash and go a million miles an hour but it's just like so not enough it's basketball there's so much technique and fundamentals and all these things happening this is just like well there's technique in this too but it's just not as exciting exactly. to, to the spectator because to them i mean like the angles that they have to keep hitting are of insane. course but like i'm watching hoops and there's like it's more variety. Yes. Like, like you're seeing like an alley-oop, you're seeing a three-pointer, you're seeing a, you know, an, an incredible defensive play. It, it's broken up more. As yeah. As opposed to the way this is to me. But like, I also have talked to people who love this, whose opinions I do trust. So. Yeah. It, you know. It's a little reality TV for me, that, that, that Formula One show. It's like a bunch of hot guys competing. Well, and it's like all Euro. Cool. It feels like. In the, the it's way very like, Euro. Because I love tennis, but it does have that tennis vibe where yes. they're all wearing like a sick watch. <laughs> and they're all fucking <laughs> like. Slick hair. Kind of too hot. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. And they're cocky as shit, and it's cool. And then they fucking crash like that, which is crazy. But that is the crazy. I mean, that makes it extra tragic. You're like his fucking hair. <laughs> no more. I know. I mean, you get why women like these guys because they're they're real daredevils. Yeah, exactly. Tennis they're ain't hot, a daredevil. They're hot and they're kind of reckless. And yes. if they're like dry or something in the interview, that's just like an added bonus. Totally. Totally. But this guy who wins them all. What's his name? The guy who wins every fucking race. For uh, is it Red Bull? He wins every race. You know the, what I'm talking the about. On the left's pretty hot. What's his name? He's like a robot. Oh really? What's his name? He's the best. For He's just the number one guy. Number one Formula One. I mean, it's killing me that I can't remember his fucking name. Daniel. R R no, not Ricciardo. Ricciardo. He's supposed to be cool though. He's okay. like the funny one of the funny ones. I think. Okay. But wait, what, what's the number one guy? Are you just searching best Formula One? People are calling us stupid. In the oh, they're right yelling now. at the screen. Because I know it was like Lewis Hamilton forever, but now it's another guy. Hamilton Schumacher. No, who is it? Uh, no, it says no. Hamilton's number one. Who is? Yeah, but that's probably old. Oh, okay. Schumacher. No. Verstappen. Verstappen. That's Verstappen. the guy. He's he's like the stud. Oh, okay. he's like it, he wins so much that it's like boring. It's almost like everyone's like, what, what's? I guess we're competing for second place. Oh. But these guys all live. For stopping, uh, for stopping. Where do they live? Switzerland or something? Where's like the hub? I got. We should stop talking about this. Cause we're, <laughs> no, we're just asking we're questions because we're fucking idiots. But like, I look. I would love to learn more about it. Yeah, sure, sure. Just because why not? It's but, just a new thing. I also think and this is going to sound cunty, but I think when there's a machine involved as a, in a sport, it's less cool. Like I like fighting or boxing. It's just like bare bones. Basketball, it's like ball and hoop. It's very simple. This has a fucking car. And in exactly, it. and some of the companies are better. Yeah. Like so, like yes. like Red Bull and Mercedes make you a better car. So right. it's like you're at a disadvantage if you don't get one of the good companies. That takes away from the sport a lot. For sure. So yeah, I I agree with that. Yeah, you want the basics like track. Yeah. Tennis is a racket and a ball and net. That's it. Tennis, I, I dig tennis. I love tennis. I would like, I've never been to one. We should go to one sometime. I would love to go to the That'd Open. Cool. List goes every year. He I loves know. It. Maybe we'll go with him. Yeah, sure. Maybe the fucking agents will hook us up with Ooh, some tickets. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, tennis is awesome. I watch that on the plane a lot because it's that little screen and I can see it all. Yeah. Hockey, I can't watch on, live, on live, screen. Live, it's pretty fucking great. Live's great. But on screen. I, I went like, with little Gary recently. We had a ball. And he played hockey. And he's pretty good. Yeah, he's a little ball of energy, that kid. He's a little hockey puck. <laughs> Should we wrap this uh, bad boy up? I guess so, yeah. And plus, the, the ladies aren't uh, aren't hard on the eyes. Ooh. 
I'm hard on. I'm, I'm gonna be hard on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where are we gonna be here? Woo, Doug! A lot of editing on beacon, this one. Beacon, baby, Mark Norman at the Beacon. Yeah, it's coming up. Whenever this comes out, it'll be uh, soon. Uh, Beacon, New York City. Hopefully it's sold out by now. Lexington, Charlotte, San Antonio, Houston, Boise, Salt Lake, Atlanta, Raleigh. I'm doing Charleston, Austin, Tucson, Phoenix, Charlottesville, El Paso, Albuquerque, Memphis, Little Rock, Knoxville, Chattanooga, Syracuse, Buffalo, Minneapolis, Madison, Evansville, and L.A. for the Netflix Fest. What do you got, Fatty? I got Dania Beach. Uh, I got uh, Omaha. I got, uh, fuck, OKC, is that next? Yes, Irvine. Nice. Oh, we got Dallas before that as well. Love it. The OKC, Irvine, Salt Lake City, then the special at the Wilbur, Samuel.com slash shows. I think it's, I think it's, you know, uh, look at OKC and stuff like that because the others are looking are looking all right. But uh, it's, a, it's amazing that, like, I just talked to Godfrey and he's like, oh, I was just in Dania Beach. And you're like, it's amazing there's enough people in Dania Beach that are like, we'll go to Godfrey, we'll go to Fort you. Lauderdale. Yeah, I guess it's, that's a, that's is that a good millions? Area. Billions. Millions of people? I mean. Oh, uh, yeah, there's, there's people there. Okay, I just worry. I'm like... Florida's got cities. That's true. Oh, all right. well, that's not a lot of that's people. That's not a lot but of people, yet... but I guess you get people from all over. Yeah. It's a big club, too, at 375. I know, I know. It's a big room. Hopefully, big we, room. Hopefully we sell some chickens. Decent food there, too. Yeah. I, the club is great. Great club. One of the top Florida clubs, I'd say. Yeah. All right, folks, get some Bodega Cat. It's on the uh, the interwebs. Buy a bottle, make a paper plane, make a sidecar, make a boulevardier. And follow Bodega Cat Whiskey on IG. Let's get those numbers up because Mark and I are trying to get uh, some distribution, and we're working very hard on this. Not re- not like that hard, but we're trying. Here, here. You got that right. Yeah, we're pushing. I'm, I'm connecting with people, then it falls through, and then I connect with another guy, and that falls through, and it's, uh, it's a it's tough, annoying, right? tough sledding. Yeah. So we'll see you guys. Thanks for listening. Tell a friend. Queef it up. Thanks, guys. Sunday's the day for my next bender. A bit of fever wreck, you know the fear juice close. I've had a little too much bourbon. And Norman's talking shit about the